Hi everybody, Alex here from Australian Detailing Professionals. Today I'm with Mr. Romy Nassar from Ultra Fine Car Care. Uh, and we're in Sydney on a very sticky day, so yeah. excuse us if we've got a bit of sweat coming out here. Yep. Um, Romy, great to be here. Thanks for having me. Mate, it's been a while. It and, has been um, a while. It's, it's, I, you know, when, when I got the message and the call, I, um, I said, you know, I've got to jump and jump on this opportunity. Thanks so and much. Thanks so much for coming out, Alex. It's, Brilliant. Yeah, as I said, you know, we originally connected a number of years ago. Correct. Came on for FenLab and now we're here. That's right. Exactly. Yes. Yes, indeed. So I'll, I'll start off with, uh, can you tell me a little bit about your background and how you got into detailing? But we were going through these questions earlier and I was saying, while you are a detailer and a very good and experienced detailer, in fact, one of the best, Thank you, you also uh, have a whole lot of brands as a, as a distributor that you look after. So a lot of these questions we might, we might massage into place yeah, given yeah. that you do wear a lot of hats in the industry. Yeah. Um, but it'd be fun to hear about your detailing experience as much as going into some of the brands that you now distribute and, and what you get up to. So tell us about how you got into detailing. Um, it originally goes far back down to mid 2000s, believe mm. it or not. And because um, my background is not even in anything to do with automotive. That's right. I'm actually background in computer engineering. Yes. Um, specifically in corporate banking. Right. So during my period there, I nearly did two decades there, just showing my age, guys. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, and uh, <laughs> I happened to work with a guy who was really into his cars and really into cleaning and detailing his cars and I said man you know same as me and back then I had the um the brand new 350z right right yep. which was a pretty cool car yep. and it was black yep. so you know yep. cleaning that thing was a daily freaking chore yeah yep. so anyway um we were always talking about brands and you know who's got this and who's got them back then the talk of the town was Swiss facts yes right yep. so one thing led to another yep. and basically he turned around and he goes um man, we should start selling stuff. And I yeah. said, I go, what are you talking about? I said, you know, it was one of those things that like just came out of nowhere. And he goes, no, 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 we can obviously do the website. We can do everything else about the, you know, putting up the products and stuff. Mm. I said, all right, we'll give it a go. Mm. And um, we originally actually started reselling for Waxit. Right. So we had a couple of things because um, at the time um, they started bringing in uh, Swiss Fax. Yep. Yep. And so from then, um, about two years down the track, I said to myself, I got hungry. Yep. I was still in IT. Yep. And now yep. we're talking about sort of coming into uh, 2012, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I said, I need to become a distributor. I want a brand that no one has here, yep. but I want to test it and make sure it's great and then move forward. Are you still in the corporate world at this point? Yeah. Just a bit of time yeah. Each one. yeah. Yeah. And just okay. to let you know, I didn't yep. leave corporate until... 2019. Okay, right. So yep. I was juggling quite a lot. Yeah, sure. I nearly actually got fired at one stage because I was <laughs> taking too many lunch breaks on the phone okay. for detail. Yeah. So anyway, and then um, about two years down the track, I, I saw a brand, Valet Pro, someone had told me about it, started looking up, and the first thing that came out was uh, Dragon's Breath, their wheel cleaner. Yep. Uh, long story short, I wanted to get it on board. I wanted to pursue and, and get ultra fine car care to that next level. Yep. Um, and the guy who originally I partnered with, he basically said, oh, you know, I, I'm not really sure about it and this and that. I said, tell me how much you want, get the checkbook out. And yeah. I said, I'm done and I need to pursue it my own way because he wasn't really willing. Yeah. So then I got that going, Valet Pro, and that was, that was great. Mm. Um, and the next thing was uh, paint protection. Mm -hmm. um, we started off with a brand I don't really want to get into, mm -hmm. but then uh, FenLab popped up, mm -hmm. um, and the year was actually end of 2016, believe it or not. Right. And then we just went from there. Um, what was it? It's probably been, we're coming into the fourth year now yep. for, um, for Kraken. Yep. And Kraken was a development that I stumbled upon because I was just researching and seeing what factories that could make something for me or what they're doing, yep. get involved, something, you know, evolutionary. Mm. And, you know, Kraken or Kraken, however anyone wants to say it, don't get it confused <laughs> by the rum brand. Um, and basically, yeah, they, they had a, a graphene that was self-healing. And I said, yep. no, no, no. And then originally when they sent me the first batch, I was like, mm. man, think, this is black. You yeah. know, this, this color of the product, I go, well, what's going on? And I was a bit, and then he goes, yep. yeah, you wanted a pure form. Yep. 
And then the first year, Alex, we, um, we got 51 installers on board. Okay, wow. Right, and now we're developing that and we've got other products and stuff. You can see it on the website. Yep. Um, so I'm managing three different websites at the moment. Yeah, right. um, and now we're starting to look into PPF. Yep. So we're looking into distributing a, a brand to PPF, which is gonna be, I, I think it's gonna be mind blowing. We've yep. been doing some testing. Um, and the thing that I wanna do with that just like I've been doing, the other big thing that I've been doing for the past nearly four years is the training. Yep. Getting people on board, getting people involved, building people's careers, yep. you know, let them live their dreams, whether they're 19 or 35. Yep. I had a guy fly up from Orange, um, not fly up, drive up, mm. got people coming in from all over Australia to mm. do the training. So that's another big aspect of yep. um, Ultrafine. Yeah, and I, I'll say personally, that's part of the, the nature of what you do as a distributor as well with these coatings. I mean, it's quite a lot of them are quite complicated, particularly as Fine Lab offers some very high end uh, coatings and Kraken, of course. Um, Absolutely. That you will not only give advice technically, but you will help people out with business too. And you were yeah. saying before how rewarding that is yeah. um, as part of what you do, just seeing people grow from nothing into to really looking after themselves in the business. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and like I always say, I'm always available to my um, the guys that I set up for any of the products seven days a week. Yep. Whether you bought a Roops machine from me mm. or you're on board with Kraken or FenLab yep. or even have you know, bought a Valet Pro product. Yep. And sometimes I actually come in to the shop because people are like, hey, oh, I've got to come in on Sunday. You know, oh, sorry, man, I'm not sure. And yep. I said, for sure. You mm. know, lucky for me, I'm only five k's away. You know, yeah, exactly. It's my second presidents for, for sleeps and yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, it, 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 look, this is meant to be you know enthusiast orientated content. But I will just say because I know detailers watch that you know people say, oh, what brand should I go with? And really, it's as much the person behind the brand as it is the product itself. So. You know, so I, I, I look at the market and I look at the industry, and yeah. I'm always trying to get that next level above, not yeah. only in products, mm. um, but also the support. Yes. Yeah. Now, when I, when I got into corporate, I was running, manage, managing teams, supporting my guys, because like I always <coughs> say, now I've got a full-time person working for me. Mm -hmm. I've got a couple of contractors out there, but you always lead by example. Yeah. Yep. And I think that if I can give people seven day support, if I can show, you know, not a, again, mm -hmm. the brands are great, mm -hmm. but they're only as great as your support mm -hmm. and education. Yep, yep, for sure. Excellent, thanks, Rom. Um, this is, can you describe the range of services that you offer? Now, we, yeah. we, we again, <laughs> it becomes a bit gray, but yeah. um, you still offer detailing. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So even as we see the cars that are in here mm -hmm. and um, there was actually a couple of other cars that were supposed to come in here. I'm sorry if my mess is appearing on that bench. I just forgot to clean it up. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> That's all right. It's a Mickey That's Mouse right. in here other than that. Yeah, so, you know, even, even as simple as, you know, this is a very good client of mine. It's a C63 mm -hmm. 2019 with a facelift. Yeah. Um, this is actually a matte paint from factory. Mm -hmm. We had it um, PPF, mm -hmm. but he's a very good client and um, he comes in for a lot of maintenance. Yeah. Um, the brand new RS3 sitting in the background, um, we're gonna be doing some correction and actually getting some, um, some PPF down on that as well. Nice. Primarily, I get a lot of inquiries for training. Yeah. Um, and that's anything from, oh, Paint correction is, I must say, is at the top of the list. Mm. And then the next thing is um, oh, uh, ceramic coatings, whether it's FenLab or Kraken. Yep. You know, oh, we want to be part of it. Can you tell us more? And, yep. you know, and they come in. Sometimes I've got to do virtual sessions. Mm -hmm. But primarily, that's, that's most, of the, most of the things that we offer. Yep. Um, and then obviously the retail side of it. Yep. You know, your Valet Pro yep. and pretty much all the other chemicals. I was going to say, you've got quite a few... Uh, good brands within the suite already prior to the you know um, valley pro your pns is a whole lot of other products so yeah not only coming in and saying look i've got the coatings i can help you out with pretty much everything you need that's not right. to mention all your other contacts in the industry for anything you need no that's Still right to a blower you were just mentioning so yeah you're very yeah, helpful that's right the and yeah. um and it's always good to reach out to my interstate um mm. clients such as yourself mm. and we've had many conversations in the past where you're like Oh, Rom, can you, you know, who do you know that may be able to help me with this? Or, Correct. Rom, I've got this situation and I've always got a technical representative. Maybe he's in Sydney, yep. maybe he's in your state. Yeah. But I always love the networking. Mm. Networking, you know, becomes uh, the growth of business. It's the heart of the business. And that's what I grew up to do. Mm. Even, you know, at 24, yep. when I was in, in the banking industry, 
I gelled very well with the third level guy from the CEO of Westpac, mm -hmm. you know, 24. He's like, yeah, you know, take my secondary car spot, use it anytime you want. <laughs> and I was blown away. But from that, yep. the networking, it just grew and it was part of my DNA. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, great. Um, uh, can you explain the main brands and products you use, but more so in this circumstance, it's more the main products that you distribute? Yep. Yeah. Oh, we'll kind I of think, we'll yeah, that I was going to say, yeah, they go sort think, of hand in hand. Yeah. Um, I love the PNS range yep. um, for the, the main things, like the basic things, and mm -hmm. I don't want to sort of downplay that. Yep. But, you know, the, the brake bust is great. The Express, especially, for example, the wheel in there needs attention on the Express for the that. Alcantara. <laughs> yes. I was one of the first people in, in Australia to actually tell the yep. distributor, hey, by the way, it's great for Alcantara. And they were like, what? This and is I a really good tip for the punters at home. So yeah. Alcantara, let's just touch on it really quickly. Yep. What would you use on there? So um, first of all, guys, always put a towel to cover up the, uh, the cockpit. Awesome. You don't want, for example, we've got this beautiful... Um, LCD cockpit, you don't want um, any chemicals touching it regardless. Yep. Yep. And then basically you can go two ways. Um, primarily if you want to protect everything else, you don't want a lot of, a lot of uh, splatter and stuff. Yep. I would take a boar's hair brush. Mm -hmm. um, there's a number of ones out there. Valet Pro has some, yep. Car Pro and so forth. Yep. And spray your PNS Express straight to that yep. and then brush it in. You want to get it in, soak it in, mm -hmm. let it sit for a little bit, maybe a minute and then basically grab a nice um, Korean style, uh, probably three, 350 GSM cloth. Yep. And basically we're gonna choke the steering wheel yep. and get all the grime out of the steering wheel. Cause yep. our hands have oils on them yep. and nine times out of 10, we're not, well, unless you're me, um, you're not washing your hands before you get in the car. Yep. <laughs> and that's how it flattens the actual, um, the uh, Alcantara. Yep. So once you choke it and that, you leave it, leave it to settle, it'll dry, it'll come back fluffy. Okay. You'll see a lot of crap come out in that cloth. So dry microfiber, are we using a bit of water in there to get the Dry microfiber is fine yep. because you'll, you'll have enough uh, PNS in there and it's, yep. you don't need to dilute the PNS, trust me. Yep. I've used it on anything from a Merc up to McLaren's. That's good to know. Even a Lambo and it, and it works fine, no and staining. No real residual chemicals on that wheel you feel at that point? No, Not what you right. can do after that is yep. you can put something like uh, a Fenlab or a Kraken textile spray okay, and yep. then that way it will give oh, it a bit right. more protection. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Rob, just back on to Kraken, Fenlab and uh, your new venture in um, paint protection film. Did you want to talk about those brands a little bit as well? Yeah, uh, I can't disclose the brand of PPF right now, but in relation to the Kraken and uh, Fenlab, yep. um, you know, they they're both great brands, yep. um, not just because I, one is my development. Uh, Fenlab's been with me now as, as a distributor. I've, I've been with them, I should say, uh, for coming up to eight years. Wow, right. So, you know, it's got a great range of products for all the different types of people. Mm -hmm. Your enthusiast, um, your detailer, and then your more serious guys you know better than me about the self-healing products. Yes, they can be quite technical, yeah. but they work. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you know, Fenlab's had one of the, you know, the strongest followings when it comes to self-healing. We're about to launch uh, something big with all the industrial coatings. Mm -hmm. So specifically around calipers and wheel wells and the underbodies, but also you know, it's, it's one of those things where, where does it stop? Yeah. Someone's even now talking or spraying them on the actual wheels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so mm -hmm. that's going to be the next chapter for Fine Lab to go into there. Yep. Um, and with Kraken, I think that, you know, the development of their graphene self-healing products, the five and the seven year, yep. again, I really have seen a lot of growth in that in Australia. And I think that 2024 is still going to keep growing. Um, already this year alone, I've brought on another three applicators, mm -hmm. um, primarily actually uh, Melbourne and Sydney. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're the most busiest cities, um, yeah. most populated with detailers. Yeah. And then apart from those, uh, those, uh, those products in Kraken, we also have a fantastic leather coating and textile. Mm -hmm. And then we have a range of chemicals as well and price points are really good as well. Uh, Ron, can you explain some of the warranties that are available on these products? Yeah. So um, from Fenlab all the way through to Kraken and the in-betweens, um, we have anything from a 12 month. 
yep. uh, products, and we have the three year, uh, and then the five and the seven. But obviously, we always, I, I always like to make sure that the client, whether I know them personally, um, they're a return client or they're new, yep. um, even down to the detailers, I wanna ensure that they've gone through the actual warranty booklets. Mm -hmm. And this was one thing that I did, and we're actually, we're actually redoing it um, in a way to make it a bit more understandable and a bit more, like it actually is going to be a, a bit more, I wouldn't want to use the word flashy, yep. but it's, um, it is quite, it's going to be quite nice. I'm actually going to send you a copy when we're done. Yep. Yep. Redoing a lot of the marketing for um, Kraken. Mm -hmm. and we're trying to offer our guys a lot more for their money, mm -hmm. you know? And that's the thing that it comes down to when they pay so much and we give them these warranties, mm -hmm. you know, what are they, what are they really getting? Yep. So same as the client. So, you know, now we do the online warranty for Kraken, same as FenLab, yep. but I'll make sure that the booklets are read correctly and there's an understanding. Mm -hmm. It's no use giving a seven year warranty mm -hmm. when I'm going to get my car and throw it through the car wash with the brushes. Yep. Oh, I've got swell marks. Oh, they're not healing out. Mm -hmm. Same as PPF and everything. Yep. So I just want to make sure that people understand um, those. And I'm more than happy to mm -hmm. speak on that with the end customer yep. or the detailers, just so they understand. Because really, to me, it should come from the detailer and the first conversation they have with the customer. It's like, Absolutely. What, how, what do you, how do you look after the car? There's yeah. no point in, in covering it in the finest coating in the world if you're gonna keep putting it through a ton of washes. Right no, that's right. Day, so, and I think yeah. there's that persona, you yeah. know. Um, yeah, I'll, and I'll set and forget, that's why I'm getting a coating. I, yeah. I don't have to worry about it, because look, it just looks clean all the time, yeah. but yeah. it's not and, the actual truth. Things do still bond to it. So, yeah. yeah, and it comes back to that whole dealership uh, misrepresentation. True, true, indeed. Can you name the most challenging detailing project you've worked on and how you handled it? Yep. So, first of all, it wasn't here. I wasn't yep. done in, in my presence. That's yep. the first challenge, because when you're in someone else's presence, yep. um, you know, it's a, it's a new place. You yep. don't want to forget anything. And you know better than me that when you've got to take your gear with you... It's always something yeah. you forget. <laughs> so, let me paint the picture. Yep. Brand new $600,000 720 McLaren. Right. Yep. Um, pretty much all the carbon parts on it, mm -hmm. uh, exterior and interior. Um, I had to go to McLaren Sydney, or Bespoke they call it, yep. and literally we unwrapped it, it's, it's come off the truck, yeah. and I'm there doing correction. With a bunch of guys so, behind you. <laughs> yeah, well actually, um, management couldn't believe it, yep. and they go, well, the car should have been presented, blah, 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 and, I, and they, uh, the actual owner goes, would you like to come and see you know, how he's working? Yep. And of course they caught me in a interesting position <laughs> because where the 70, 720 is, um, the back of it, where you've got the engine bay. Now, um, the standard uh, engine bay vents, they're actually, I think, a, I think it's a polycarbonate or something like that. Mm -hmm. But of course, my, um, my customer had them all in carbon. And I'm actually sitting there with the three inch machine and it literally just fits Alex, the mm. three inch right on each, on each of the actual bigger panels. Yep. Then you've got to do the one inch on the top one. Mm. And that's obviously at the time when everyone came out and I could hear them. You know, when you, you hear that background noise, but you're sitting there sweating <laughs> sort of like now. And, and it's like, don't, don't say, you know, just concentrate, concentrate. Yeah. And that focus was just, you know, that's when you've got to be in your element. Yeah. Um, and then you've obviously got to show them. Mm. Here's the before and after. Yep. And they had rotary marks all over them, yeah. by the way. And then down the side of the door, yep. I saw some sanding marks. Mm. Uh, luckily, it wasn't black. Which um, is not uncommon. No. And, and that's to be shared because people expect yep. these cars are worth a fortune, but they yeah, turn up that's, trash sometimes. Yeah, even this um, $150,000 RS3, the back mm. of it, mm. you go to open the boot, mm. the whole, there's a back part probably about this big, yep. and it's just rotary. And everything else is gloss yep. on the whole car. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was that was pretty stressful. I mean, the only other one I'll just quickly touch on was yep. Alan Jones's Bentley. Yes, right. Yeah, it was in very bad shape. Yep. Um, that was over a four grand job, and there was no PPF. Yeah, right. So, but yeah, that's um, I love it. I love yep. it. I live for those things. Yep. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So does my heart. <laughs> Don't have any caffeine on those days. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> have you noticed any common detailing misconceptions, and would you like to address them? Yeah. Um, I'll probably go for two here, mm -hmm. if we can put yeah. um, two little subjects here. Sure. Um, one is, we touched on the warranties, mm -hmm. um, but also the fact that 
I do all the training here specifically, we'll talk about corrections. Yep. And a lot of these guys starting in the industry have always got in their head um, single stage, mm -hmm. you know? And, and when, you, when you have a, whether it's a brand new car, whether it's six, 12 months old, mm -hmm. you know, they want to obviously finish the car quite quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's not what that it's about. It's not about the gloss. It's not about, you know, it's always the whole thing about, oh, we'll put ceramic coating and oh, look at the gloss. Well, mm. no, no, no. You need to really spend your time and invest in your work yep. and, and basically explain it to the customer. Now, if the customer doesn't want to pay, that's a different thing. So what's your sentiment about the single stage that it's a shortcut, you're saying? Or? In most cases, yes. yes yep. But, you know, we've had brand new cars come in here and the paint hasn't really seen the sun, some of them as low as 20 kilometers. Mm. And, you know, some of those, the, the clear hasn't still gassed out. Mm. And yes, you, you will be able to get around it with a single stage, you know. Mm. Mm. Um, but in most cases, I feel that two stage is gonna get you um, that perfection or close to. Yep. Uh, and that's just some, a message that I wanna send out there because it's something that I want people to understand mm. and, and actually, you know, be paid for it and actually grow from that. So for the people watching that don't know what a single stage is from a double stage or a triple yeah. or whatever the hell it is, yeah, yeah. can you just briefly touch on why yeah. that is and, and why you're saying what you're saying? So a single stage primarily is that you have your polisher, mm. you, have, um, you have your choice of your, your compound, and the pad and you're pretty much just going to go over that area mm. of the paint mm. once yep. as the machine is running so if we've got this panel we're running 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 no matter how many times and how long we're sat on there mm -hmm. we're removing the machine Yep. That is a single stage, yep. no matter how many passes. Can I jump in really quickly? A lot of people might know it as a cut and polish, right? Yep. So we're really just talking about just a polish Correct. versus a cut and a polish. Correct. Which is compounding more aggressive first stage, deeper correction, so to speak. Yep. And then I've used the word correction, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Deeper correction and then polishing to finish it off to level it. So basically leveling the valleys to create gloss. So you're saying basically that the job isn't being done thoroughly with just a one step is what yeah, you're that's right. in principle. However, we had, you know, going on to the single stage, we had a GLE 63 come in mm -hmm. um, and the guy was selling it. Yep. The car was eight months old. Mm. So what I did was something quite technical <laughs> yep. um, and I took a Meguiar's microfiber pad and I put a, a really um, nice finish on it, which was the perfect finish. Yep. And I was still able to cut um, 85%. So and, very aggressive pad and very light polish. But, but still have a great gloss on it. Yep. Can I play devil's advocate? Yeah. Thinner paint obviously is a complication to that argument, isn't it? Absolutely. So if there's not enough there, we've got to kind of go for a single. Yeah. So yeah. there, there we, are. And, and just on that note, yeah. uh, a warning. Yes. Uh, Teslas, some of the, um, the metallic reds have yep. a tinted clear. Yeah, right. So you'll get paint transfer. Okay. So that's, a, that's another thing going back to single or uh, single stage paint, or even talking about single stage polishing yep. on the thinner paints. Mm -hmm. um, there's plenty out there at the moment, especially in the darker colors in the Chinese, Japanese market. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's, that's my vision and, and that's my thoughts on it. Um, and then again, just to touch on what I said, the second thing is about warranties, yep. going back to ensure the customer knows exactly what they're purchasing and they've gone through what the what the warranties actually offer yes if your manufacturer or your product doesn't offer it mm. or it's not clear mm. then just be aware of that how you're going to explain to them don't sell them fake dreams yes what parts of detailing do you enjoy and what would you prefer not to do um let's go with prefer not to do for <laughs> yeah, 200 no, there, no no yeah. let's start there and <laughs> you can um, find a friend look, on that one yeah so for for me um I normally pass away the jobs, or not so much turn them down and not do them. I'll get one of my contractors to do those jobs that are very messy interior. They may have cigarettes, they may have um, spillages of liquids on the carpets. Yep. Kids may have vomited. Mm. Um, and it's not because of the fact that I feel that I'm at a higher level. Mm. The timing that I'm gonna spend, if I turn around and I say to you, um, Alex, thanks for bringing your car. That's 1500 bucks for the interior. Yep. I'm sure you're going to use some profanity there. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. for me, I'd rather get my guys to say, hey, who, who would like to do this job? And I've done, I've passed on many jobs. Yep. 
um, while I can concentrate on my distribution training mm. or going back to the full corrections and codings. Yep. So that's what the, the sort of I don't um, yeah. like. Yep. Yep. The things that I love, and actually we had um, the perfect example last mm. November, mm -hmm. Maserati Ghibli, mm -hmm. uh, black, solid. Nice. Um, the guy never looked at it while he purchased it interstate. Yes. Right? Yep. I said, you need to come in for an inspection because mm -hmm. if I'm looking at these photos and you're in the garage, you know, the good old garage light, yep. like sort of the lights I've got upstairs. Well, a bit and different it, to what's going on here. Yeah, right? yeah, I don't yeah, know that's if that's right. coming in the camera. Yeah, we've got a couple there. there couple these things groups. don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, this Ghibli came in and I actually, I said, so you bought this, you know, basically he's based in Sydney, bought it from Melbourne. Yeah. And it looked like 3,000 through the whole car. Mm. And again, I don't overcommit. I mm. say, look, we, we will do our best, but I know, I know the Maserati clear coats, and mm. it's like Merc or Beamer or especially Audi. Mm. You know, they're the harder clear coats. And this thing was um, a 2017. So I'd known right. when, when you have a, a, a clear coat that's sort of aged yes. and been damaged, yeah there's a better chance where you can heat that up a lot more. And we even sit there with the, with the heat guns. We got that up to 52 degrees. Okay, right, yep. And the difference, I, I should tag you actually, the difference mm. was amazing. Because mm, right. originally I'm like, is this metallic? What is going on here? Yeah, yeah. And let me tell you, the amount of washing we had to do after the correction yeah. and the amount of compound that was coming out was unbelievable. Yeah. But those jobs, the most challenging, I yeah. think I, um, I charged nearly 12, 1300 just for the correction, mm -hmm. but the guy was blown away. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously there was deeper scratches. The front end was hammered with pepper stones, pepper stone, stone chips, yep. but um, I should say peppered with stone chips, yep. but um, the, it was remarkable, yep. you know, and those, those things, you know, fine, the whole McLaren story was one thing, but actually <laughs> the transformation yeah. is, is where the most challenging, it's like, okay, Let's see what we can do. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. no good to go. I have got a brand new car. Yeah. I got a car with matte wrap. Let me clean it. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. it doesn't matter. It's, it's probably where the bug comes from to some degree, right? When you yeah. see that change and it's like, wow, we really turned that thing yeah. around, and yeah. you end up working on a lot of nice new cars, and you don't have that opportunity so no. much, and then one comes in. No, and I mean, even I got a client that comes in for a detail with a seven hundred thousand dollar F eight, yep. and right. it's like. I said, look, you know, the film is, is, is this and this. If you ever mm -hmm. wanted it redone, yep. we can probably, um, you know, redo some of those sections. Nice. But um, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. I love the challenge of, of a transformation, you know, yeah. Yeah. especially some of these older classic cars too. Yeah, right, excellent. Rom, can you tell me about the future plans for the business? Yeah. Um, looking at where the industry is going uh, and I'm, you know, slowly sort of pushing towards that. I think, you know, the three letters that pops out in a lot of people's minds is PPF. Mm -hmm. um, and it's no secret if people don't know already, you know, we are heading down that path and we're trying to do things um, better. We're trying to offer better training. Ourselves, we're actually gonna get some very experienced training. Um, and then I guess over the next six months, we're gonna you know, develop on that and, and really take it to the next level. We're going to offer things that a lot of PPF companies don't offer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously having the plotter here, doing the cutting and so forth, yep. helping out some of those guys. What you touched on before was brilliant. Mm -hmm. Some of the smaller things, some of the finer things that customers, um, you know, would like. Mm. And then you've got your starters that come in for a bit of training yep. and they'll do the smaller pieces, and I think that's very important. Mm -hmm. um, the, other, the other thing that I see is um, obviously Kraken getting a bit more growth. Yep. Um, FenLab will always continue just to sort of, you know, boil up on the background. We spoke about sort of industrial, that's gonna go to a different level. Mm -hmm. But I'm always going out there and not being so stubborn on myself, um, but also, you know, asking the questions you know, maybe checking in with you every now and then and, and watching where the market's going. It's not like watching the housing market or mm -hmm. looking at interest rates. Yep. It's actually seeing and, and touching on new technologies and, mm -hmm. and actually, you know, 
taking it there in, in the Australian market. Mm, mm, great. Uh, just to explain, you use an acronym. PPF is paint protection film. Correct. We've got to remember there's people Sorry. that have never have heard about yeah. it. That's all good. Yeah. Yep. So we're talking about clear film. wrapping the cars. Probably the, the best, or not the best, but the um, most durable and highest level of protection you can put on paintwork. Absolutely. And interiors too. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and, and we were talking about yeah the advantage of if there's things annoying you, um, perhaps, and, and, and you love your car, they're just typical high wear spots that get damaged. PPF is a great solution for those to start with, get a taste for it, and then eventually you'll probably have your old car, whole car wrapped it in the end. I just want to add something to that. It's quite interesting with PPF. We are a pretty young market here in Australia. Yep. And what I'll find is if I have an American customer, generally speaking, it won't be the first time they've had PPF, but nine times out of 10, an Aussie will be like tr putting their toe in the water with it. So yeah. it's an exciting time for Australia now. I yeah, think. that's right. And, and I think, you know, as we, as we go forward over the next couple of years, you're mm. going to actually see um, a lot more, uh, and this is actually something else that we've sort of had uh, a bit of a whisper about in the background. And again, mm. I can't name names, but you're going to see a lot of other dealerships, mm. you know, doing doing contracts. And you know, I had a chat with mm. someone the other the other week, um, a quite a renowned dealership in Sydney, mm. and I said, on average, you know, how many cars would you would you get PPF? And he'll go, we'll we'll do at least two a week. Mm. Mm. So you That's know, the good. opportunities there. Yeah. Obviously, coatings are coatings. Yes. And remember, in Australia, there's always that turnover of vehicles three, every three to five years. Yeah, right, right. And look, we're pretty cynical about dealers in general because we can generalise that what the problem is that the cars aren't prepared well enough for the coating most of the time. Just generalising that's a major flaw in going through the dealerships. But the dealers do drive awareness of products. Yeah. And I wonder how many are actually saying, would you like PPF with that? Yeah. Because they'll have, they'll have bigger profits in PPF probably than coatings, maybe. Uh, but still, that's going to be an important part of developing the industry, whether we like it or not, that the dealers do start offering. So that's, that's right. And you know, the key thing there is, since you're touching on that, it's mm. education. Yes. Now, because I deal with Porsche Cars Australia, and mm -hmm. I'm in and out of a lot of Porsche dealerships um, day in, day out, mm. I drive that education. Mm. Because if I tell you, uh, Alex, how many times I get the phone call mm. from a new staff member at, at Porsche, mm. and I basically already have rehearsed what the question's going to be, <laughs> yep. and then I'm like, you know, how can I help you? Because mm. it's foreign to them about, oh well, you know, the the old paint protection was like this, mm. um, not to name names, but was machined on with yep. a polisher. Yeah, wow. And I'm like, <clears throat> yeah, no, 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 we we do things a little different, <laughs> and we can get the cars done and prepped in a, in a, in a better fashion. Yeah, Romy, can you tell us a little bit about what you get up to outside of this business? Yeah. Um, Actually, I, I love to stay fit. I love to stay mm -hmm. active. Um, you know, that's, that's been coming up to nearly 50. I mm -hmm. think it's, it's very important. Um, I don't have to show my age anymore. I just said it. <laughs> but <laughs> um, right. apart from that, we, you know, we obviously love going on drive days. Um, I should get back into playing a bit more golf. Um, but apart from that also, I still, because of my technical background in IT, I still do a, a couple of things here and there. As a matter of fact, there's a machine upstairs, which I didn't show you. Yep. It's actually having a board replacement done. It's one of my machines. Okay. Um, so I like to sort of stay on top of the computer technical stuff. Cool. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But okay. um, never a dull moment with me. <laughs> I bet. I yeah. bet. Excellent. Rom, uh, just to finish up, how does everybody find you? Well, let's talk about where you are and online and, um, you know, if they want to start uh, installing your products, etc. Yeah. So the primary website and primary um, point of contact, and I call it the parent website, is um, Ultra Fine Car Care, so www.ultrafinecarcare.com.au. Mm -hmm. um, Kraken is krakenaus.com. Mm -hmm. And then FenLab is actually, or FineLab, however you want to say it, is au.finelab.com. Yep. But otherwise, um, just reach out. You'll, mm -hmm. If you search my name or look, go on Instagram or Facebook, Yep. We've got over 5,000 followers between Facebook and Instagram under Ultra Fine Car Care. Yep. Um, and I'm always, even on um, you know, WhatsApp, I get, I get messages from there. Mm -hmm. So DM us, call us, or call me. 
Um, even Jake's got getting calls now, my, my full timer. I'm guessing you've missed 15 while we're doing this, by the way. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. long, uh, I just want to explain as well, if you're looking to have any of these products on your car, um, most of the distributors I'm guessing will be found on the Ultrafine Car Care website. That's right. But you're always very available to everybody, so give you a call. Yeah, and, and seven days a week. Give, give advice on who you use and what to use and all yeah. that sort of jazz. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. Rom, you make yourself more available than anybody I know in the industry, Thank so um, thanks for everything you do. Thanks Cheers, so much, Alex. Thanks again. Thanks Cheers, a lot. Mate.